Hello everyone, I am Jessica Star Rockers. You may recognize me. I am a familiar face around these parts. About three years ago or so, I served as a learning fellow here at the CLF, and I am so grateful to be back again with you. We have all experienced significant life changes since I was last in the pulpit here, this virtual pulpit, and more than ever, we have learned how interconnected we really are, how interdependent, how mutually dependent we truly are. As many of our UU spiritual leaders like to say, the web of life is a real thing, not just a metaphor. So I want to talk today a little bit about that interdependent web. In my article for Quest this month, I tell a story about my aunts. I had six aunties growing up in addition to my mother, two grandmothers, and a host of other female family friends who cared a lot about me. They encouraged me, they fed me, they took me in when I was troubled, they taught me a lot. How to read and write, what music to listen to, what movies to watch, what people to be wary of. How important kindness is, how important hospitality is, and critically, how to care to be in relationship and caring for one another, for myself, for family, for my community. Despite all of the love they poured into me, all of these amazing women, we had trauma in our family. We had our share of struggles. And part of my way of dealing with these struggles was to use drugs and alcohol and eventually to abuse drugs and alcohol. Strange how getting high can make a person feel like they are part of something. At least that's how I felt, at least for a while. I wanted to be free of my family, of obligation, of expectation. There was a lot of it in my Italian and Catholic upbringing. And in turning to drug culture, I was able to disconnect myself from the culture in which I was raised and find a whole new culture, a whole new subculture, a new reality. And in the new reality, I was cool. There's a song by 60s musician Oscar Brown Jr. titled, But I Was Cool, where he says, I've always lived by this golden rule. Whatever happens, don't blow your cool. You gotta have nerves of steel and never show folks how you honestly feel. Throughout the song, he pokes fun at this idea of being cool while he weeps and wails over the horrible things that happened to him, the horrible things he does, all of his mistakes. The whole time he pretends that he is playing it real cool when he's obviously not. It's a funny song, but it reminds me of my own attempts at being cool to be cool means to be aloof, to be disconnected, to remain untouched and above it all. I tried it, being cool, but much like Oscar Brown Jr., I was never very good at it. My mom and my aunties made sure I knew this in a good way, in the best way possible, made sure that I knew I was part of a family that cared for me no matter how I tried to disconnect myself from them. My journey of sobriety has been me continually coming to terms with how cool I am not <laughs> and all the ways that I am connected, all the ways that I have been cared for, all the love that is available to me, even if it isn't perfect. And that's the trick about being mutually dependent when we are human together, authentic with one another, and we do it close up and over a long period of time, we come to see what love requires, some measure of sacrifice, some measure of forgiveness, some measure of compassion, and a willingness to care, to lose your cool and get involved. We are all, all of us, already connected with one another in this great web of life the pandemic has exposed that fully. And then we choose to be in religious community where we commit to being real with one another. We commit to caring for ourselves, our planet, each other. 
And in community, we discover none of us is cool. None of us have nerves of steel. We are always blowing our cool. This is being human. It happens. In order to thrive in this interdependent, mutually dependent life, world, community, we have to show folks how we honestly feel. We have to be radically honest with ourselves too. And in the last three years since I was here as your learning fellow, I got ordained and served a brick and mortar congregation as their solo minister. And in January, I resigned. There are a lot of reasons for this, but I want to share with you one piece that feels really important. When I started seminary, I thought and was taught that to be a minister, I had to be cool. They call it non-anxious presence. You have to have nerves of steel. And in times of stress, you never show folks how you honestly feel. During those years of seminary and during my time here as your learning fellow, we experienced significant social and political upheaval. And through it all, I learned to be cool. I took a job as a parish minister and I was cool. Then the pandemic happened and I was cool. And then my beloved dad passed away very suddenly last summer and I was cool. And then my mom came to live with me and adding it all up, I could no longer be cool or pretend to be a minister who kept their cool. And that in fact, as someone in recovery, it was quickly going to be real bad for me if I kept trying. I realized if I wasn't going to be cool, I didn't know how to be a minister anymore. The expectation that we have as a denomination of our ministers to be cool, to be detached in some way, to maintain their emotional independence, and to not be mutually dependent on their congregation seems to me, particularly during this time of pandemic and social revolution and political upheaval, it seems not only an impossible task, but a cruel one. Perhaps there are parish ministers out there who have figured out the trick of being cool while honoring an interdependent relationship with their congregations. Perhaps there are. But as I am these days committed to telling you how I honestly feel, I can honestly say I think the current manifestation of ordained ministry in our faith goes against honoring the interdependent web. I think ordained ministry as we currently practice it, which we have inherited from white patriarchal imperialist colonizers, goes against the seventh principle entirely. For me, I have learned time and time again, I am not cool. I can't be, it's not healthy for me to remain detached, aloof, some piece of the interdependent web that is somehow not mutually dependent. This sort of bifurcation of my heart and my soul is not where my ministry thrives. It's not where our faith thrives as we navigate this complex modern world. And you all, you all have a ministry in this world. We all do, every one of us. That's why we're here in this community. That's why we are at worship tonight. Because we know this and because we care. Here tonight, we acknowledge we are part of the interdependent web, the mutually dependent web, each one of us, no one set apart. And it doesn't matter if we are ordained or not ordained. All of those distinctions must fall away. Together, may we seek out and honor the ways we are connected. May we feel the call to pour love into one another, into our relationships, into our sacred mutual dependence like my aunties taught me. May we learn and relearn how to care for one another, how to be honest with one another. And if we ever had it in the first place, how to once and for all lose our cool.